Hello, I'm Miss Jones. I'm going to be your teacher this year. I'm excited to learn with you, get to know you, help you as you cruise through your high school experience. And I'm excited to see how much you guys grow this year. It's fun. School's fun. I'm excited to meet you. Uh, so the purpose of this video is to basically go over all of that first day of school stuff that you would otherwise endure uh, with a teacher. I'm going to be talking about things like classroom expectations, uh, my grading policy, late work policy. Um, I'm here with my animals. We can see Mochi there in the taco truck. Hi, Mochi. And then we have Bailey here. I'll, end, I'll talk more about them later. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I go over my family. But yeah, we're going to be basically covering a bunch of that first day of school stuff that's really important that you may have otherwise missed. Um, I'm making this video intentionally for those students that might transfer into my class late and uh, who might have questions about how things are run. And so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So without further ado, uh, this is uh, this Miss Jones class. Okay, we're going to uh, cover a few things in here. Uh, we'll I'll provide you a brief introduction about who I am and what my values are as a teacher. Uh, we'll talk about the tree activity, which we would have otherwise done in class. Uh, but for those of you coming in late, I'd still like for you to try this. Uh, we'll go over the syllabus. I'll share with you my teacher pledge and kind of go over things uh, like my personal teaching philosophy, some of my values as an educator, you know, why I do it. And then uh, we have an index card activity um, that's, you know, more for me to do something with you in the future. So uh, that's what we're going to cover. Um, so firstly, uh, talk a bit about myself. All right, I've been teaching since 2017. The last four years of my teaching experience, it's been at Arvin High School where I taught English. I'm very glad to be back in Bakersfield. This is the city in which I grew up, and so it's nice to be a little closer to home. Uh, a few things that I want you to know about myself. I'm the type of teacher that loves to celebrate students for their achievements. Um, I love to brag about my kids and what they, they can do and, and, and ways that they make the world a better place. Um, I'm the type of teacher that cares more about personal growth over grades. Uh, you know, of course, I want every student to get an A in my class. I want them to earn it through hard work and dedication. Um, but then there are also important aspects about being a human being that I value as well. So as long as you're growing, as long as you're becoming a happier, healthier individual through this process, um, you know, I, I can ask for more than that. Uh, so I like to share this quote by Carl Jung. Uh, he states that in all chaos, there is a, a cosmos and in all disorder, a secret order. And this really fits, you know, there's this balance, you know, sometimes things don't go our way. Sometimes things aren't what we've planned for or what we expected them to be. Uh, but when it comes down to it, you know, through all this chaos and confusion and disorder, things settle into a perfect order, a secret order. Uh, and so, you know, in this class, like with the rest of your life, you know, you need to ad adapt to change uh, and accept that as, as part of living. Uh, so a bit about my education, my work experience. I graduated from California State University Bakersfield with a bachelor's in English in 2014 and would later go back and earn my master's in education in 2020. Uh, I didn't get a, I didn't get to walk across the stage. I was one of those students that unfortunately, uh, you know, because of the pandemic uh, kind of lost out on a bit of that experience, but that was okay. I've done it before. Um, you know, I finished my credential at the University of Laverne in 2017. I've been with this district a very long time. Um, I was a student here. Uh, I met my husband <laughs> in high school. Uh, he was a student in the Kern High School District. Um, from then on, I went to be a long-term substitute at both the high school level and the adult school level. I've taught English language development. I even taught economics as a substitute, which is pretty interesting. Uh, after I got my teacher education, after I got my credential, I worked two years as a seventh grade teacher at Lakeside Middle School. And don't get me wrong, I love my seventh graders, but teaching middle school is not for me. I'm much happier to be teaching you here at the high school level. Uh, from there, I taught ninth and 11th English primarily at Arvin, and I taught students from every level up to honors and was the advisor for the cosplay club there. So that's a little bit about my professional experience. This is more personal. Uh, this is my family. Okay, this is me and Mr. Jones and our brother Dylan. And you can actually probably hear Mr. Jones in the background right now. He's uh, 
playing video games, and it sounds like it's not going so well for him. And uh, so, yeah, you probably hear him right now. Uh, but anyway, so we have four animals. Uh, you can see that uh, we have Medic here. Uh, he's our old boy. He's our old man dog. Uh, he's about 13 years old. He's getting up there. He's a little slower than he used to be, but um, we still love him to pieces. He's still a good boy. Uh, you met earlier Mochi. Okay, she's sniffing around in here. Uh, Mochi is three years old. Uh, she's a corgi. Medic's a corgi mix. Uh, so they're pretty short. Um, and then you've met Bailey. Okay, Bailey's pretty interesting. You can kind of see right here. Um, he only has three legs. Uh, he has three feet. Has a little stub right there. Um, but he gets around just fine. Just hops around. And then, of course, we have Zeus here. Like all black cats, I can't get a good picture of him. This is probably one of the best pictures I have. Um, and so I think that shows his character and his personality quite well enough. Uh, some of my personal interests, I am a photographer. Uh, when I was going through college, I did all types of work in photography, like shooting weddings, sports events. Um, I was really involved in the journalism program at my colleges. Uh, and then, you know, Mr. Jones and I, we do want a family, but it's just not happening. So, uh, you know, one benefit to that is we get to do a lot of traveling. We can afford it without kids. So uh, places we've been to, we've been to... Greece. Uh, you can see I have a few pictures from Greece here. Uh, we went to Japan, uh, you know, all around uh, California, natural parks, Yellowstone, Washington, D.C., and uh, even Peru. I've been to Machu Picchu uh, in Peru, and it was really exciting. And to get there, I had to do like a 50-mile hike, which completely kicked my butt, uh, but it was totally worth it, totally worth it for the experience. Um, if you guys ever get the opportunity to travel, I hope you can take advantage of that. Uh, what I did this summer, uh, we kept the travel limited to California, so we went up north to San Francisco and watched an opera there. And so you can see that's from, from the opera we went to. And then we went south, we went to L.A. to attend Anime Expo, and uh, we got to go see an idol concert for a group that we really like. So um, I am a bit of an otaku, I'll admit it. Um, you know, I definitely like Japanese anime and manga and... Uh, you know, if you have any opinions about that, I'd be happy to hear them. All right, so this tree activity, before we get into the tree activity, I want to discuss with you about the nature of this course. It's a hybrid course, meaning that uh, I provide everything for you either by hand to be completed, you know, written out, um, or you can complete every task online. Um, I want you to choose what you're most comfortable with. Some of us are stronger typists, others we do a lot better with handwriting our, our work. Um, so I want you to pick what works for you. Um, everything that we do in the classroom uh, will be available online. And also this puts the responsibility on you if you're absent. If you're ever, ever absent from my class, I expect for you to stay up to date and complete your work online on your own. Uh, you know, that's a high expectation I have for you. Okay, so now to the tree activity. So the way that this works is in my class, you would have gotten a paper with this image on it. Uh, you can also complete this online, of course. Uh, but what we see here is we see a tree with a bunch of kids on it. And what this tree metaphorically is supposed to represent is our educational experience. Okay, our time in school. How well do we do school? Okay, the tree represents school. Now the kids here are students that are in the school system. Okay, so for those of you that are high achievers, it's not really difficult for you to stay on top of your homework. It's not really difficult for you to do well on tests. Uh, you might find that you identify more with the child labeled as number two up here at the top. Because, I mean, we can just see it in his expression, right? He's wearing this big old smile on his face. He looks confident. He looks pleased with himself. He's on the highest branch of this tree, and yet he's looking up. He's looking to see how high he can go from there. Okay, uh, other students... Okay, I definitely identified with a 10 when I was your age. I was a little more on the lazy side. You know, I was happy kind of just staying in the middle of the tree and relaxing and watch other people struggle and fail or do really well around me. Um, some of us might just be starting out. Some of us might be transferring from different schools or maybe from a different state. Um, some of us just might be, you know, getting used to this for the first time. You would probably identify with number five here. And then there are also those of us who do struggle with school. School is not a perfect fit for us and for our unique personalities. And that's okay. Like, 
don't feel any shame about that. Um, you know, as long as you're getting back up on that tree and, you know, working as hard as you can to get better. Um, but some of us might identify with poor Six right here. We can see on his face he has a bit of a sad face and, you know, looks like he knocked himself out a little bit. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to look at this tree and I want you to tell me which one of these students you most identify with. You know, as a student, which of these kids right here do you think best represents your own experience as a student? Um, so I expect you to write, you know, just a paragraph. It doesn't need to be too much, uh, but that'll give me a really good idea on how you see yourself as a learner. Okay, now we're going to talk about the class syllabus. These are my course expectations, student behavior. We're going to have a lot of meaningful, constructive discussions in this class. And in order to do that, uh, we need to show mutual respect. Uh, we need to be willing to listen to others. We need to show tolerance to viewpoints that might differ from our own. Uh, no student under any circumstance is permitted to use words or actions that discriminate against another person's race, ethnicity, age, gender, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, disability, economic status, or personal characteristics. That's something that we don't do here. And the reason why is because um, it's called, this concept is called um, the paradox of tolerance. And so this is a philosophical idea that in order to build a culture of tolerance, intolerance is the only thing that's not tolerated. And so this is the rule that we stand by in my class. And so this is a philosophical idea, um, I think it was by, oh, what was his name? I'm having a brain fart. I think it was by Hopper, Karl Popper. Karl Popper came up with this idea. Um, so this is the rule that we use in this classroom. Now my classroom management style, so <laughs> you know, me having to crack the whip, me having to, to manage the class and make sure that we're getting things done, um, it kind of works on a sliding scale. And so I have this visual for you uh, to kind of make sense of that. Uh, we're all gonna be starting out here this year at the 11th and 12th grade level. I expect all of you guys to come to my class and act like your age. Um, so at the 11th, 12th grade level, students need little prompting to stay on task. Okay, they can easily avoid distracting behaviors. They don't distract others. You know, we're good. This is where I expect you to be. And if you stay here all year, that's perfect. Now, this has happened before in the past, but I have had classes exceed this level and move up to college level. This happened to me last year. And those students uh, got some excellent perks. For example, they got to pick their own seating arrangement. Okay, if I can trust you to stay on task and to stay motivated and to do your work and not cause distractions. Um, you know, I'll treat you like like an adult and you can sit where you want next to your friends or, or wherever. Um, however, you know, this is a sliding scale. And if we slide backwards here, you know, to the freshman level, you know, I'm having to manage student behaviors in a way that's distracting towards others. And at the freshman level, I'm probably having to manage just like one or two students that are causing distractions. At the sophomore level, I don't know why it regresses like this. I think sophomores are worse behaved than freshmen. Um, but if you're behaving at the sophomore level, I'm having an issue with the entire class. The entire class is regularly being disruptive. And that's really unfair to the students that are there to learn. Um, it's really unfair to me. I, I have a job to teach you guys and I want to do my best at it. And so I, I really need your help if that's going to be accomplished. Uh, lastly, seventh grade. I don't think anyone's going to be acting like a seventh grader this year, but you never know. Um, at the seventh grade level, uh, you know, there is no academic growth because we have childish distracting behaviors happening. And all of my energy, all of our energy is more focused on behavioral growth instead of academic growth. So let's let's not go there. So my homework policy, um, I don't give homework. Um, I try to honor your time. I try to keep everything maintained and presented to you in the hours of our periods together, in our class period. Um, so you shouldn't expect any homework assignments. I'm not going to give you anything to do over the weekend. Um, however, if you're not using your time wisely in my class, if you're not using class time to complete classwork, uh, that classwork then becomes homework. And then it is your responsibility to do on your own time. Uh, so make sure that you're making the best use of class. Um, another thing that I don't excuse, if you're in my classroom, you're working on class stuff. You know, I get it. We might be having a rough day, um, but you can't just sit in my class and play on your phone and tell me that you'll do it later because in my experience, students 
that don't work in my class don't work at home either. So that's a no-go. Um, and also remember, too, that when it comes to work, uh, you need to demonstrate high academic integrity, meaning that you're not plagiarizing, uh, you're not relying on chat GPT to write your essays, you know, you're, I, I expect you guys uh, to give me the highest quality uh, of work that you can. As for late work, I have a very lax late work policy, which is good for some students and actually kind of difficult for others if they can't manage their time well. Um, but I accept late work until the end of the quarter. Okay, the second to last Friday of the quarter is the last day for late work. And I do provide due dates. It's usually a week after I provide you with the assignment. Um, I usually collect homeworks on, on Mondays. Um, and if you don't make it by that Monday, then you will be required to do a reflection form. We call these late work forms. And what these late work forms are, they're tedious, they're annoying. Um, but what they're supposed to get you to do is to reflect on your time management skills, uh, the reason why your homework is late. Uh, and hopefully through these reflection forms, you don't have to do them as much anymore. Hopefully you reflect on your behavior and learn to turn things in on time. Um, I will never mark you down points for late work. As long as I have that late work form, it's going to go into the grade book and it's going to receive no negative impact, no points lost. I'll, I'll put 100% of your score in the grade book. But it has to come with a late work form, a complete late work form. And so you can find these in my classroom. I'll show you where, there are, where they are. Uh, you can also complete the digital late work form online. Now, if you need instructional accommodations, uh, if you have any special needs um, or, or think you might and, and want to be tested and evaluated uh, to see on what kind of supports can help you grow, uh, please talk to me about it. Um, I don't want you sitting in my class, um, you know, unable to see the, the whiteboard because your glasses broke. Uh, you know, talk to me and I can see about um, helping you uh, learn as best as you can. So my grading process, I try to make my grades uh, fit into these three categories. Uh, firstly, my grading system is accurate. I rely on rubrics. So if you follow the rubric, you'll know what score you will earn. Uh, they're mathematically sound, easy to understand, and they correctly describe your performance. Uh, my grades are also meant to be bias resistant. So that means my own personal feelings can't get in the way of your score, uh, you know, they're not, they're not based on my own biases, you know, that I may have for or against a student. Uh, so, you know, they're fair. That's what's important. My grades are fair. Uh, lastly, they're motivational too, okay? Uh, the way I grade motivates students to adopt a growth mindset while being easy to understand for their academic standing. You know, I want my grades to encourage you to try more and to do better. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about success criteria and feedback. So as your teacher, I'm going to be modeling for you what I want. Okay, if I give you a writing assignment, I will probably be writing that assignment for you first so you know exactly what I expect you to do. Um, I might show you work from other students in past years. Uh, along with that, once you turn in your work to me, I'm going to be providing you with feedback that tells you exactly how you did and, you know, what you need to do to move forward. And so we know rubrics, we've used rubrics before in other classes, um, you know, they're kind of based on these categories. And one thing I'm taking with me from Arvin High School is this imagery of, of burgers, <laughs> which is kind of ironic because I'm kind of a vegetarian, I don't really eat meat. Uh, but, you know, when I grade your scores, you're going to see, uh, or when I grade your work, you're going to see your score based on this stamp. I'm going to stamp this on your work. And you know, a, a no score, an NS, means that you probably just put your name on the paper, but you didn't do much else. And so you'll see the stamp, and I'll circle that if that's what you earned. Um, if you're at the beginning level, what this means is that you've started out, but you're not quite demonstrating any mastery of, of the, the standards that I'm trying to teach you. And so it would be the equivalent to, you know, getting a burger without a meat patty on it. All right, you just have the bun, it's flavorless, it's lacking sustenance, it's it's not great. Um, so from there, you want to move up to developing. So developing, you're on the right track, you haven't quite met the standards yet. Uh, you know, this would be like the equivalent to like a D or a C in the grade book. Um, if you're at the developing level, you just have a basic burger patty, you know, no sauce, no condiments, no cheese, you know, just meat and a bun. Now, if you're at the proficient level, you're earning somewhere between uh, an A or a B. 
and you've got it. You've got the cheese. You might have an extra meat patty. You've got the condiments that you want. It's delicious. Um, but and if I were to circle this, you know, on your work, that's how you know that 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 was your score. And then, of course, the one that we all want, the exceeds. That's the best of the best. You went above and beyond. A plus. You know, you're the burger, the fries, and the Coke. You're the combo meal. Uh, so this is kind of like the visual representation that I'm going to give you for your grades this year. And here's the grading scale. If you earn an exceeds, um, I use the four-point scale. I don't use the 100-point scale. I don't give you percentages. Um, instead, you would earn uh, like a 3.3 to a 4 would be an A. That would be the exceeds level. Uh, your proficient level would be at a 2.5 to a 3.2. That would earn you a B in the grade book. Uh, developing would be a 1.6 to 2.4. That would be a C. Uh, the beginning score would be a 0.9 to a 1.5. That's a D. And then, of course, no score would be anywhere between a 0 and a 0.8. Um, so understand, too, that your grades will be updated on your student view accounts. Never go to Canvas for your grades. Those grades are not accurate. They are lies. <laughs> I, uh, I don't update your, your scores in Canvas. Um, I just basically use Canvas as a tool for getting digital work from you. Okay, it's not a real, you know, not a real grading system there. And if you need help finding your student view accounts, logging in, uh, be sure to reach out to me and I'll, I'll help you out. So yeah, your grades will be reflected in the grade book um, using a rubric with a four point scale. Think of the hamburger. Uh, assignments will be based on the California Common core state standards, unless you're in uh, my ELD class, then we're focusing on the English language development state standards. Uh, students will have the opportunity to retake any tests or submit any written assignment. And so um, if this is something that you want to take advantage of, if you just didn't have your breakfast that morning of, of the test, of the exam, and uh, you want another opportunity to improve your score, I would love it if you try again. However, if we're going to have you try again, it's really important that we have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we get to discuss your performance the first try and set you up to have a better chance with your next attempt. Okay? Um, and then late work forms are still required for assignments that are not turned in on time. And so I'll be very clear about due dates. I'll share those with you. You know, be aware. Um, so my teacher pledge, um, this is something that I share with students at the beginning of every year. It's a big old wall of text, so I'll try to be fast. Um, as a teacher, I promise to be understanding, patient, and encouraging. Never shall I be demeaning or cruel. I swear to be attentive to my students and communicative to their parents. I'll build professional relationships with my fellow teachers so I might learn from them or offer to listen to their own struggles. Each course will be taught with clarity. Each student will experience a positive atmosphere whenever they walk through the doors of my classroom because my mood, attitude, and love will help foster such an environment. My work is to inspire a love for learning in all those I teach. So the short version of that uh, is, you know, I will be fair and do my best to help you. Okay, I promise you that. All right, so the last activity today, uh, these index cards, these are basically uh, tools that I'm going to use inside of the classroom uh, to help keep track of, of your needs and your identity. Um, so if you can, uh, see me in class sometime. I'll give you a blank index card, or you can submit this digitally to me um, in an email. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to, on an index card, tell me the name that you like to go by and your last name. In fact, it really helps me if you sign your name, how you would sign your name at the top uh, of a homework assignment so I can better identify you. Um, let me know your preferred pronouns. And I want you to tell me what you want to be someday. Okay, now I'm not looking for a job description here. I don't want you to tell me you want to be a doctor. Um, what I'm looking for is the way that a person's friends and family members might talk about them when they're not around. What kind of impact as a person do you want to have on the world while you have air in your lungs? What kind of person do you want to be remembered as? Um, so explain what you want to be someday and then also give me some feedback and tell me what I should know to help you learn better. Okay, if you're having any difficulties or any struggles, you know, I, I know it's incredibly vulnerable, but um, I encourage you to, to tell me what's going on so I can better help you. And so I have an example here uh, for Missy Ayala. Okay, she likes to go by she, her. She wants to be known as energetic. And then for the fourth one, you know, these are just a few examples of what you can write. Um, don't write anything for number four if you don't have anything. But, you know, she wrote, you know, I like to type instead of write by hand. So this is probably going to be a student that focuses more on Canvas than um, on paper. Uh, she has trouble seeing in the back of the classroom. Cynthia, who's also in the class, dumped her sibling and now doesn't 
now they don't get along, so they can't sit next to each other. That's helpful. Okay, if you have any drama with anyone in the class, you don't have to tell me what happened or what went down. But if I shouldn't sit you next to each other, uh, you know, I'll accommodate you. Uh, this student also has severe anxiety. And, you know, I know that can be really troubling for a lot of us. And so, you know, I am still going to have high expectations of you. I still am going to expect my students, you know, to perform and participate in discussions. Um, but if you have severe anxiety, especially about public speaking, if you warn me, uh, ahead of time, I can warn you ahead of time before these public speaking opportunities happen. That way you're able to gather a little more confidence and be better prepared for what's about to go on. Uh, another example, uh, last year a teacher made us read too much from Hemingway. Okay, if you had an English teacher last year that made you read too much of the same author, I know how tiring that can get. You know, let me know who they were and I'll try not to assign you reading from that person. So this is just an example. Um, but yeah, yeah, go back. I want to know your name, pronouns, what you want to be, and what I should know. And I think that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Email me. Um, it is important to know that I spell my name weird. I spell it A-L-L-Y-S-A. -L so if you were to email me, you know, Alyssa Jones at kernhide.org, uh, just make sure you're spelling it right. Make sure it goes to the right inbox. Uh, and I look forward to learning with you. So... Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, reach out and take care. Bye-bye.